So hello and welcome to another Built for This conversation. My name is Shelia Stevens. This is my colleague, Wynne Morgan. And we're speaking today to Erica Bugby. And as we've been talking about in this series, we're living in exceptional times that call for exceptional conversations, which is what we're trying to do here. And Erica has been so generous to give us her time to talk about families and kids at home and parents and how they're dealing with the situation currently. And we're just going to dive right into that and see what she's seen around this area. She works also with families. And so Erica, I'm just going to hand over the word to you and let you introduce yourself and see what you have to say. Great. Great. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, I, I, so my name is Erica Bugby. Um, I'm, I'm the founder of Erica Bugby Coaching, and I've been working with teenagers, specializing in teenagers and their parents for 20 years. Um, I, I ended up specializing in that because I got all of the teenagers in our practice. I was part of a um, Franskin Associates before this, another organization that does what I do. And uh, I just ended up relating to teenagers uh, and relating to their parents that are pulling their hair out. Uh, partly, I think, because I was not a very pleasant teenager. Uh, so I, I kind of, I, you know, I can see it without the judgment and the irritation. Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, so I, you know, one of the things that I do is I do a lot of video coaching. And so I've been working with parents primarily. They're the ones that are having a hard time with this uh, through this process. And I, I, so I was going to share what I'm seeing parents are up against the most right now. Um, with, with this virus and being quarantined and stuck in a house in close quarters and not, not having anywhere to escape to. So one of the things that uh, I, I think makes it particularly difficult is, is that, you know, you, for a lot of people, they're sort of up against the things that are hard for them anyway. So for the people that normally um, don't like to be in the house or like to be busy, they're having to learn how to have not a lot of act, not as much activity mm. to be involved in. They they can't go out and do, uh, and and so we're all kind of up against uh, our weak points times ten right now, which I find is a really good opportunity. And so, but one of the things that I've noticed that I think has for the parents that have been able to find some grace and some composure and and grow through all of this is something I'll point to actually that I heard from a business leader, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago um, that I worked with. And, you know, after we, I have an in-person programs and I think it was our third or fourth day, it was a four day program. I think it might've been the last morning he came in. He said, you know, it's funny. I've been this business leader. He's really, really successful. He's trained a whole bunch of people, mentored people, and he's really good at what he does. He's a um, property development. And, and he said, you know, he's, the value he's gotten from his experience, because all the people under him say, you know, is it just knowledge? Like, I, I want to I be able to do as well as you do. And he said, you know, it's funny, my experience hasn't brought me, it's, it's not the knowledge that's helped me. It's, I've learned how to overlook things. And there's a lot of stuff I used to pay attention to and think about that I don't. And mm -hmm. so my mind isn't cluttered. I just, essentially, I've learned how to let a lot of stuff go and how to be essentially be picky about what I have on my mind and think about. And that, you know, he didn't realize, he didn't get clear on that until he came out and kind of looked at things in the big picture, but that's what he went back and essentially passed on to his organization and his numbers went up enormously, even in the people that were just showing properties and the receptionists and and that's what I want to talk about here is one of the things that's happening is we're up against challenges like being stuck around people we don't like, or um, even, even though they might be your teenagers uh, <laughs> and you love them, you might not like them. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. if we're honest, there's times where we don't. And um, I have two teenagers, love them to death, but there's times where I'm like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Uh, I raised that. I raised that. <laughs> your, 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 or people. So you're sort of up against, you're having a lot thrown at you that makes you really uncomfortable or that you react to and struggle with. And one of the things is that there's a lot of, there's a lot of things in the landscape right now that you can't change and influence, but 
you do have a huge amount of say in, in terms of where you put your energy mm. and what you let go of and what you lean into. And, and, and that's, that's what's made the biggest difference for me as a parent going through this and as somebody who's had to keep a business alive is, is so, so I'll give you an example here. So yeah. like in terms of how you work, there's a lot of things you can't do that, that you used to be able to do. And like I have a, a woman that owns a, a perfume shop, kind of a boutique perfume shop in Portland, Oregon. And she's like, I, nobody can come into my store. It's, it's fragrance. Like you can't do it virtually, but she, you know, she realized, Oh, I can, you know, when she essentially let go of what she can't do and, and what was happening to her finances and how can I keep the store? She realized, you know, she woke up one morning and, and she said, you know, I can, I can sell little samplers. She, she, she's, they, she's into wine and you know how they have flights yeah. of wine where you can yeah. get like five or six different kinds. She said, I could, I could do flights of perfume. I have all these samples. I don't even, I just give them away. She said, I could sell little packages of flights. Mm-hmm. And so she, and she said, I don't know if people are going to be buying, but it's something that costs less. And it's so interesting. I talked to her one morning and she said, you know, all I've been doing is filling orders. So it's gotten all of a sudden she's had all this interest. She said, oh, I just have to very, it, people are spending. I just have to ask myself, well, what are they interested in? How can I, and, and, that, and that was something that the people do in their business lives fairly well, is that they, they're able to get out of the fear of what am I gonna, you know, the, my numbers don't look the same, the landscape has changed, but to look at, well, what can I do? And, and look to your creativity. And, and that's where people can do that in their jobs when they come up against something they don't do as well at home. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's something that I, I want to highlight. It's, it's just as easy to do at home. And, and let me show you what that looks like. Yeah. So one of the parents that I'm working with is she's, she works for, uh, she works on political campaigns. They live in Washington, DC. She's her whole life is social change and, changing the political landscape. She's like, now we need this more than ever. And she's stuck at home with her daughter who's 17 and is into um, watching makeup video tutorials, <laughs> getting a tan, sleeping and watching reality shows. Mm-hmm. It's just no interest in politics, no interest in social change. And the mom is essentially kind of uh, is struggling with that. She feels like, you know, this is why our country is struggling the way it is. And, and she's, it's right in her face now. Yeah. And, and, she, you know, it was so interesting is after a few conversations, she said, you know, I don't, I can't, I essentially don't like what I'm seeing in my kid. And is she 17? I can't change that. And I don't want to live like this. I can't, I can't do it. She just is disheartened and kind of bummed out. It's like, how is our country going to survive? How's the world going to survive? These are our leaders, our future leaders. <laughs> so, so anyway, we, she left that conversation and, and I, we had a conversation about the value of um, seeing opportunity, the way she's seeing it in her work. And what happened is it's interesting. She came back and she said, you know, I, one of the things I suggested is, well, why don't you, why don't you look at her the way that you look at a, one, a politician? That there's a lot of features about them that are maybe unconventional or that don't line up with your value system or maybe other people's value system, but there's something inside them. There's, you know, there's something, there are things in there that you draw out. That's your job. And, 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 and that's what happened. She came back and she said, you know, first of all, she's so comfortable in front of a camera. I didn't know this, but she has her own YouTube channel. She samples, she, she buys makeup, she orders it online. She tries it and she talks about it. And she has she's just like thousands of followers and she's so comfortable in the like front of the camera. And she said, the first thing I did is I thought, God, she could just channel that into politics and be like a social leader. And, and she said, but I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be doing that. Um, I am supposed to be getting to know her. And, and she said, you know, 
I, I found, first of all, she found, they started, they watched um, it's one reality show. I think it's America's Top Model or one of these shows that the mom was really disgusted by. She said, it's actually, I was surprised there's substance in it and there's meaning in it. In that world, I didn't think there was any. And there's that show I found kind of captivating. It was like a guilty pleasure. And it's like, we started watching that together. It's really the only time we spend time together. And I actually look forward to it. And I think she tolerates it, watching it with me, but she's willing to. She says, so there's this part of our relationship that's growing. And one of the things that I, I thought was so cool about that is that there's something, there's, there's something that that points to in, in a, a mom like that, where she's able to, there's two things really to, to see the difference. There's thinking about limitation. Yeah. And then there's thinking, looking in terms of opportunity. And she, she saw that she was all, she was all limitation about her kid. She was all limitation about what am I going to do on the weekends? We only do well as a family when we're out. And I only do well when I'm out. I do not do well at home. I don't like downtime. And, and it took, I think, four conversations for her to even be interested in what I was pointing to. But <laughs> to see there is opportunity here. Yeah. And don't, you can't take my word for it. Because she said, you know, I don't, I, frankly, I didn't buy it. You know, I was like, yeah, whatever. Maybe there's opportunity for you. This is not opportunity. This is time that I'm not out there changing the world. And, but once, once she settled into seeing, oh, I, I can learn about my daughter the way that I learn about political leaders. And I can get interested and in, essentially get over myself yeah. and get interested in this show that I thought had no substance in this whole industry, which I had completely written off. And, my, and, and all of a sudden I'm seeing my daughter has talent and she's passionate and she's, I was proud of her for being into a show that has substance. I, I thought she had no substance. And she said, you know, shame on me. Essentially, I was really arrogant and I was walking around that way. And I was thinking that my kids would be better off if they were more like me. Yeah. And, and that, and, and so for her being able to, essentially let go of the, the, the kind of thinking, the path of I'm limited. Here's what I can't do. Here's the kind of kid I don't have. Here's the kind of life I don't have. To let go of that and get interested in feeling more open and seeing what else there is that can bring you someplace. That fork in the road, as she took the opportunity fork in the road and, and had more respect for the feeling of openness, what happened is she found the other ability that I want to point to that we're built with is that when people get open, enthusiasm comes out of us. It just comes out. So when she was open to political leaders, she had all this enthusiasm. It was not hard to grow to like them and to find things about them that she admired and, and was inspired by. It didn't matter who the person was. And as soon as she got open to her own daughter, she, all this enthusiasm came out. She found it was really easy to like her. She just had to sit there. She didn't have to talk herself into it. She thought, oh, I have to positive think about her. I'm going to lie to myself. She said, you know, it's so funny. I just, I just got out of my cynicism, suspended judgment, and then got to know her. And that ability is in us. So, and we're using it right now. People are finding ways of, of being at home and finding an enthusiasm for things like cooking and yard work and puzzles and projects. They're just, they're finding, people are finding a love of reading and they're getting out of a lot of the, the thinking of, well, what's wrong with this world? A lot of people are trying not to obsess about the news and, and finding, let me just immerse myself in my life and get more present in my life. And enthusiasm is what ends up coming out. 
mm-hmm. for people. And, and when you bring enthusiasm and you hang out with people in your family, your relationship goes from essentially being two-dimensional, something that you tolerate, to having to being three-dimensional, having, having life breathed into it. And, and you don't, it doesn't matter who the other people are. And, and that, it surprised a lot of parents. I think for a lot of the people that thought they couldn't be quarantined for months on end, what they found is there's things I'm actually excited, even though there's only six things I can do with my time, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm finding my level of contentment once I got past the freak out. I'm really surprised. And, and that, to me, that enthusiasm it doesn't sound, it doesn't seem like it's a very profound thing, but it's very profound in the sense that it doesn't really matter what your circumstances are. There's just as much passion and contentment and love and fondness and aliveness in available in those six things and in this seemingly unlikable kid as in anything that you handpick because because we're built to be enthusiastic and we're built to be able to be open to where, where what there is in the landscape that we can focus on and get excited about and and i don't i don't not everybody's seeing it maybe it's taking more time but that's in the cards it's just how long is it going to take people to, um, to, to get over themselves and throw out all their old plans and show up to the landscape they have and say, just like that woman that owned the perfume shop, what is there here? What is here that I can build on? What, what do I understand? What can I see? What possibilities? And to hang out in that state of openness until you, you see something and one of the things I, I, that I've been doing, I, I watched, um, I watched this more foreign films and shows that I normally would because I really don't like reading. But I've, I've watched this series that I'm hooked on right now called My Brilliant Friend. If anybody's seen it, it's mm-hmm. never heard of it. Oh my god, it's fantastic. If it's your kind of thing, anyway, it's it's set in Italy in Naples and 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 all the actors are local. They wanted people that speak this particular dialect. Anyway, one of the one of the comments in there, there's just an 11 year old girl who's essentially she's brilliant, and and she writes these stories that are just talented beyond her age. And her friend is like, "How do you do that?" It was really sweet in this conversation, and she's 11, and she said, "You know, I just I open up the pail and the words come out." And it, and it makes it does make it sound really easy, but that's what enthusiasm is. Is this girl, if you look at her, she's all enthusiasm. And everything that she, she thinks about things in a way, she's interested in stories. She's interested in where things go or where something can go in her mind. And, and that's what happens when, you know, the three of us are with somebody that we're into mm-hmm. or we're, we're doing something we're into doing even if it looks boring like i couldn't imagine why anybody was ever interested in gardening when i was a teenager it was the <laughs> stupidest activity i've ever if there's there's nothing like you didn't even grow that like mother nature grew that like you just stood there i was just disgusted but i can <laughs> but but it's so funny to think you know you just you get you show up with some interest and some openness and you'll and you find all this enthusiasm comes out and that's the feeling people are looking for and they think their life has to be set up in a certain way Mm -hmm. and and we're pointing the three of us are pointing people to know it's in the cards no matter what your circumstances no matter what your kids no matter what your what the landscape looks like and and that that's what anchors us is is that ability one to see the difference between limitation, be interested, be more interested in opportunity than limitation and to have a respect for what enthusiasm feels like so that you can invite that into your life and it will carry you really through anything. So the things people are learning now 
you, whatever you learn about this, that you're essentially forced to because you're stuck in this strange situation, the things you're up against, I promise you were up against them before this quarantine situation. We all are up against our, our biggest weaknesses. Whatever you see about it in, in, in any of these videos is going to change the rest of your life and the way you live your everyday life. So, so you're onto something here. If you can hang in there and look for where the enthusiasm and the growth is for you, uh, you'll get to take that with you. Hmm. Beautiful. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Well, so thank, much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me. You. Yeah, and inviting me. This has been really nice. And, and good luck with the rest of the series. Thank you very much. Well, I'll, I'll take us out. Okay, Lynn? So for all of you guys who are listening, thank you for your attention today. And there'll be some more interviews coming your way. You'll just look for the link under this video to see where you can find other videos of this kind where we're talking about why we're built for this, whatever this is in life. So see you there. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.